It's 7 o'clock and it's more show time in Shelbyville. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to your Saturday night and World Grand Championship night of the 81st Annual Tennessee Walkers National Celebration. In our time honored tradition, we invite you to stand and direct your attention to My name is Dr. Mark Aiken. I'm a 1986 graduate of Mississippi State University, and I have practiced equine veterinary medicine for 33 years. During my practice career, the Tennessee Walking Horse has been a big part of my practice. I've had the privilege over the years to sit on the AAP welfare committees and horse show committees doing several tenures. I've also trained USDA VMOs and DQPs in the inspection to ensure compliance with the Horse Protection Act as it involves Tennessee Walking Horses and Racking Horses. The 1970 Horse Protection Act made illegal the intentional soaring of a horse by application of chemical or physical means. Within the Horse Protection Act there were also shoeing limitations, meaning the pads couldn't be past a certain height, the toe length couldn't be past a certain length. Also as part of the Horse Protection Act was a section called the SCAR Rule. The SCAR Rule found that any abnormality found on the dorsal surface of the horse's pastern was illegal. The horse is allowed certain pathologic change on the palmar aspect of the pastern in the form of thickened epithelial tissue. The 1970 Horse Protection Act specifically mandates that these rules be applied to only the Tennessee walking horse and the racking horse. The Horse Protection Act mandates that each horse prior to showing is inspected either by a DQP or a veterinary medical officer from the USDA or both if both happen to be at the shows. This process ensures compliance with the Horse Protection Act. Once showing, first place horse is re-inspected and sometimes a random horse is also inspected. When horses are inspected prior to showing, it's important to look at three major areas. General appearance, gait and stance, and then your actual physical exam of the horse. During the general appearance part of the exam, the biggest thing that is to be looked for is the horse bright, alert, responsive to his surrounding, does he have a look of apprehension about his face? Is he abnormally sweating or abnormally breathing? Gait and stance is evaluated as the horse is in motion. He not only moves in a straight line, but he moves to the left and to the right around a barrier or a cone. The final part of the inspection process is a physical exam. The first part being palpation. The dorsal surface of the pastern is palpated, then the palmar aspect of the pastern is palpated to sure compliance with the Horse Protection Act and make sure no sensitivity is present. The second part of the physical exam is to ensure compliance with the SCAR rule. The dorsal surface of the pastern is first inspected and then the palmar aspect of the pastern is inspected to ensure compliance with the SCAR rule. Number three is to ensure compliance with shoeing regulations as mandated by the Horse Protection Act. According to USDA numbers, the Tennessee walking horse has a 93 to 95 percent compliance rate with the Horse Protection Act. As an equine veterinarian, I know the Horse Protection Act has helped the Tennessee walking horse, but there are some parts of the Horse Protection Act that have to be changed, and they need to be changed from subjective testing to objective testing, because objective testing will follow scientific and peer-reviewed accepted veterinary practices.